In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to import CSV files of orders into eShip. Importing orders from a CSV file gives you all the benefits of an integration, allowing you to import orders into eShip without any particular software setup. All you'll usually need to get going is a copy of Microsoft Excel or a similar spreadsheet editor. There are two scenarios where you might be using CSV files with eShip. You may be receiving lists of orders in CSV files, like the one on the left of my screen, from your customers or third-party suppliers. The other reason you may be using this is if your software is not natively supported by eShip for integration. If this is the case, you just need to find a way to export your orders from your software into a spreadsheet file. Most tools have a reporting feature that can be used to achieve this. There are two different ways you can use CSV files with eShip. You can copy your data into eShip's default order file template, which allows you to import the orders immediately into eShip. Or, if you are importing orders from a file that has already been created, say for example one that you've exported from your software, you'll want to map the file. You only need to map the file once, and then from then on eShip will always expect files of that format. Let's go through an example where we'll map the CSV file. To get started, go to Settings, then go to CSV File Setup, and we're going to choose Map Our Own Customized CSV File. This brings up this screen here. On the left are available columns that we can drag in to map our file, and on the right are the columns that eShip will be expecting. Let's go through all the fields in order, and I'll explain what each one does. You can see that mandatory fields have a tick next to them. Firstly, every file must have an order number of some kind. An order number is simply a unique reference to a single shipment. If you're importing from another tool, this could be an order number from an e-commerce system, or an invoice number from an order management tool, a pick slip number, or any number of different names. In my case, I've got invoice number in my file, and each row has its own number. You may notice that these two rows have the same order number. eShip will automatically merge orders that have the same order number in the same file. This is useful if you have multiple different items in the shipment and you need to describe them all. I'll explain that in more detail soon. It is also very important to note that order numbers must be unique, even if you're importing orders from multiple different files or multiple different integrations. This means that although I can upload this order today, if I try and upload an order with the same order number tomorrow, eShip will ignore the order because it knows that it's already imported it. If needed, you can make up the order number if you don't have one. Just make sure the next time you do an upload that you use new numbers. You can take advantage of Excel's autofill feature to do this. For example, type in anything with a number, select the cell, and then double click the corner of the cell, and Excel will automatically fill a row of numbers. So, back in eShip, what we're trying to do here is describe the order of columns in the file. The first column is my invoice number, which is the same as an order number in this case, so we can move on. The next column is date. It is used to order the records when they are displayed on the new order screen after import. Many times files will not come with a date, but if you have the option here, use local date time ticked, then eShip will work even if there isn't a date. Because date is mandatory, it won't actually let us remove it from this list, but we can place it at the bottom of the list, and because that field is blank, eShip will use the local date time. That simply means when you import the file, the date field will be the exact time and date that you did the upload. Let's move it to the bottom. Cool. Moving on. Name. So this is the first name and last name of the recipient. Your file may split these two out, but you'll need to merge them before you can upload it. In my example, I've got a column called Recipient, which has the names in it. The next field is Street, which I have here already. Street always contains the street name and number. It's very important that your data sits in specific columns. This column must always contain the street name and number, or PO box number. This one's also in the correct position, so I'll move on. Suburb, suburb, city, city, postcode, postcode. I don't have a state column in my file because all of my addresses are domestic, so this is a column that I can remove. Simply drag and drop it over to the left and it disappears. The next mandatory field is country. If you're dealing with domestic addresses only, your address database probably doesn't have a column for the country. Again, you can use Excel's autofill feature. For example, add a column called country, type in New Zealand into the first cell, Double click the corner, and the column is filled. Okay, my file only has a few more columns, so we're going to remove some. We don't have an email. We don't have a telephone number, but we do have an item name. The item name column describes the item in this shipment. Note that this isn't usually used for domestic, but for international deliveries, 
This item is used to populate the customs declaration part of the label. As you can see, I've got a few different items here. Mostly apples, but this order contains some oranges. Remember before when I pointed out that these two rows have the same order number. By having two rows with the same order number and different items, I'm able to have several different items in the same ship. So while all the other orders contain an apple each, this order will contain an apple and an orange. The next column, item price, simply describes the price per item. eShip will not only display this value as the part of the customs declaration, but it will also total the value of all items in the order and use that as the total declared value on the customs portion of international labels. It's important to remember that this is per item, not the total value. The item price field is in dollars by default. However, if you've defined a default currency for eShip that isn't dollars, eShip will assume this value is in that currency. This one's in the same position in the file as well, so I can move on. Instructions is for delivery instructions. I don't have that in my file, but if you do, keep it there. Make sure it's in the right position, otherwise get rid of it. Weight is similar to item price. It's the weight per item for the item that you've described. The weight field is in kgs. The next column is shipping method. I have a shipping method in my file, so we're going to keep this one. Shipping method is a very important value. If you're familiar with e-commerce, you'll notice that at the checkout stage of ordering an item, you'll be asked to choose a shipping method, and there's usually one or two options. We can include that selection in our file. The benefit of doing this is that you can create rules in eShip that will perform certain actions on the order when you import them. For example, I may want all items that have the free shipping shipping method to be shipped in an A4 track pack, or I may want signature required automatically added. This can be a helpful way to define what service you want to use for the items. Moving on, the reference field is the same as the reference that you'll see when manually creating an order. It's not a mandatory field, and my file doesn't have it, so I'm going to remove it. SKU is the product SKU of the product that you're importing. My file doesn't have it, so off it goes. Quantity is in my file, so we'll keep it. This is the quantity of this particular row of items. In my example, I have one apple in each order, and one orange for the last order as well. Company name is in my file, so we'll keep it, even though it's blank. I may have some company names included in future when I import this file again. Signature required. Options here are true, false, and yes and no. Leaving it blank will use your default setting in eShip. Authority to leave or ATL is an option. This is actually the end of my file, so I'll be removing all of these options. Country code. These columns can be used to assign a box size and courier service to each row in your file. You can define package height, width, and length in centimeters and eShip will automatically use that as the box size for that order. You can also define the carrier and carrier product code. Carrier means courier. You can choose from courier post, pace, or NZ post. And the carrier product code is where you can define the service code that you wish to use. If in doubt, you can find service codes by going to support, going to the knowledge base, and finding NZ post service codes or courier post service codes under the information section. Or you can always just do a search as well for service codes. Here are the courier post service codes. So if I put CPOLP into that column in my file, I can make eShip select the courier post online parcel option automatically. These columns are great for setting up bulk prints because after import, you won't need to interact with the orders to assign these options. I don't have them in my example file, so away they go. The last remaining options are related to the customs declaration portion of the label. Carrier product unit type is not the one that we use, so we'll get rid of it. Currency code allows you to specify the currency that is in use for this delivery. Code is where you can put the HS tariff code for that order. Color lets you describe the color of the item. Size lets you define the size of the item. For color and size, I like to think of a t-shirt as an example. The item name will be t-shirt, the color might be red, and the size might be XL. And of course, right at the end is date where we moved it before. After you've done your mapping, it's worth just going through each column in your file to make sure they're all present. Order number, name, building. Nope, we don't have that, so we'll get rid of that as well. That's better. Suburb, city, postcode, country, item name. Item price, weight, shipping method, quantity, 
company and signature required and of course date will technically be this column it'll be imported as blank and then eShip will fill in the blank for us. Finally you'll want to make sure this option is ticked in most cases. The header column is this row along the top. Because this is in an actual order we don't want to try and import this. Now we can do a test. Let's make sure it worked. First click save and then click test your saved CSV. Upload the file and then choose preview. Let's make sure everything has landed in the correct column. Order number, name, street, suburb, city, postcode, country, item name, price, weight, shipping method, quantity, company, signature required, and the date. Perfect. Now we can try importing our orders for real. Go to the orders page, click import, and then choose upload CSV file. Select the file, and then click import CSV. You may also notice we have an option on the screen to import the orders as returns. This works as expected. Instead of being outbound orders, we'll generate return labels for these shipments instead. This can be useful if you need to order bulk returns, or do a bulk retrieval of items that have been shipped out already, in the same manner as a freight forward. Let's click the button. eShip will tell us how it did. Here it shows us that it read six rows in, but only created five orders. That makes sense because we want to merge those two orders. The orders appear here. If you have default services set up on your eShip account, the orders will automatically be assigned that service, as you can see in my example. Some of the orders have automatically been assigned the overnight service, while some have been assigned the economy service. Or, if you defined those services in your file, you should see here that those services have been assigned as expected. Let's open that last row, which appears here at the top because it was imported last, and see if all of those items were added as expected. You can see here at the top, here's my order number. In the top right, it shows you the shipping method, and the source, which will always be CSV file if we're using this method. The receiver details look good, and it was a valid address. If the address was invalid, eShip will tell you, and we'll need to fix it before we can ship the item. And here, in the item section, we can see my two products. Apple and orange, quantity of one each. I made the oranges more expensive, just to make things interesting. So price of one for the apple and two dollars for the orange. One kg each. And eShip totals these two values. Total price, three dollars. Eship will put that in the declared value field automatically. And total weight. Eship will put this in the box weight automatically as well if you have the setting assigned under package settings. Because I didn't define a box in my file, Eship has used my default box. However, if you set up a minimum and maximum package weights under package settings for each of your boxes, Eship will use the total order weight and use that to figure out which box to assign. Looking everywhere else, we can see online parcel has been assigned as we'd expect from our default settings. You may find after importing your orders that you've made a mistake and that some fields have ended up in the wrong place. If that's the case, what I'll usually do is remove the existing orders just by highlighting them, going to actions, and then choosing remove can be re-imported. If you archive the orders, you will not be able to import orders with the same order numbers as these. So let's remove them. And then I can go back to Excel and have a look at my file and try and figure out what went wrong. If you're ever not sure where to put a particular piece of data in the file, or what all of the options are, you can always go to the support pages, and check out the guide importing orders from a CSV file. On this page there are written instructions, tips and tricks, and you can download example files. Also, if you scroll down, there are detailed descriptions of what each field can be used for. Lastly, some things to watch out for. As mentioned, duplicate orders are not allowed, so make sure you keep your order numbers unique unless you're intentionally merging orders within the same file. eShip will also ignore any records that are missing mandatory fields. This is the name column, the street column, suburb, postcode, and country. Watch out for commas in your data. Because we're using CSV files, which are delimited by commas, this can mess things up for you. 
If you're using Windows and it's been set up with a UK language, CSV files are by default saved with semicolon delimiters instead of commas. This will also trip up eShip as it'll be expecting commas. If you do an import and none of the orders import, this might be what's wrong. You can open the file in Notepad to see if your file contains semicolons. If that's the case, on this page here, you can change what the delimiters are. Swap it over to semicolon and hit save, and you should be able to import your file. Lastly, rules run automatically when the CSV file is imported. Some rules reallocate orders to other accounts, and some prevent orders from being imported entirely. If you have rules set up, this may be another reason why orders are not being imported correctly. This concludes the CSV file setup tutorial. Thanks for watching.